Hello, I'd like to share with you a few thoughts on this week's Parsha. In Parsha Ekev, Moshe continues to speak to the people before his death and prior to the entry into the land of Israel. Moshe starts by telling the people that they will receive reward for following the commandments of God. He then goes on to encourage the people and telling them they'll be successful in fighting the battles and in conquering the land. After that, Moshe goes on to recall many of the events that occurred within their 40 years of traveling the desert. Now, this is not just some form of nostalgia or a trip down memory lane. Moshe is trying to convey to the people that the events that occurred in the desert were tests. They were there to build the character of the people to make them into some a nation that um, can be successful in the future and in inhabiting the land. And one of these things that Moshe recalls that I find fascinating that we're going to discuss is the man. Because I always saw the man as this, you know, miraculous, incredible blessing that the people just didn't have to worry where their sustenance was coming on a daily basis. But Moshe tells us that it was something so much more and that it was a test and that we were supposed to learn something from it. And um, what it says in the Pasuk, I'll read in English so to make it easier for everyone to understand, is he, God, afflicted you and let you hunger, and then he fed you the manna that you did not know, nor did your forefathers know, in order to make you know that not by bread alone does man live, rather by everything that emanates from the mouth of God does man live. So the man was a test for us. God provided everything that we needed in the desert in order that we would have the time to introspect and to discover who we are as individuals and who we are as a nation. Because without that, um, we could not be successful in the land. You have to know who you are and what you stand for and what you're fighting for in order to be um, successful as a nation. But more than that, and a lesson that everyone can learn today is that um, sometimes we we have um, everything that we need. And, and the bread, it says, it says, you know, bread represents today money. You know, we say that I need to put bread on the table or the bread, the dough is, is even a word used um, for money. And, and Hashem is saying not by bread alone does man live. You have to have a purpose in life. And we see that um, today where we have so much abundance. And if you look even in America where um, people, there are so many uh, wealthy people or even the people that aren't wealthy, um, everyone can you know, get a meal for 99 cents or something new at Target for a couple of dollars. There's so much abundance. There's never been so much abundance um, before, uh, but yet there's never been so much um, suicide or, you know, the high depression rates or people with anxiety and all sorts of mental Ill illnesses. And so we see that it's it's not by bread alone that, that man can live. Is that, you know, people need to have um, a higher purpose. People need to know who they are and what their life is about and to live accordingly. Because if you don't have that, it's just a depressing, empty life that, that nobody wants to live. So man has to know that it's not by bread alone and, and to always have a higher purpose and to live out towards that goal and a life of meaning. Um, and furthermore, just in our Parsha, Moshe goes on to tell the people that, you know, soon it's coming the time that you're going to enter the land and you're not going to have these miraculous provisions anymore. You're going to have to uh, provide for your own um, food and clothing and everything. But, you know, that comes with a challenge in and of itself. And the challenge there is, is once you put forth all that effort and you're going to be successful and God, you know, God promises they're going to be successful, that you run the risk of thinking that, you know, all your success is due to your own efforts and, you know, people get um, haughty and forgetful of of God. Um, and Moshe says, be careful not to think uh, that it's of my power and my might, um, all my success, um, because that's when failure begins. And, and we can't have success unless God blesses our efforts. And that's what it means in the end of the Pasuk that, that we just read, that it says, um, you know, that everything that we, not by bread alone does man live, but by everything that emanates from the mouth of God does man live. So, you know, 
you have to know that you can put forth all your the effort and be the, the smartest, most talented uh, person in the world. But if God doesn't bless your effort, it's only what emanates from the mouth of God, meaning it has to be his will, his blessing, his say-so, that you will succeed. And only what emanates from the mouth of God will be. So we have to remember, despite all the hard work that we put in, that we're supposed to put in, at the end of the day, only if God blesses our efforts will we attain success. And so, you know, we all want to succeed in life. And so then we say, oh, okay, so well, well, how do we manage to get this blessing from God? And that is also told to us in our Parsha. Moshe says that all God wants from you is um, to have your awe, which is um, wrongly translated as fear, but it's really have awe of God and follow in his ways and, and to love God with all your heart and with all your soul. And now this might seem a daunting task, but really at the end of the day, it, it isn't. Um, to have awe of God is is very easy. All we have to do is just, you know, look at a human being and how they function in everyday life and, and um, uh, even water the or, or the whole universe, the constellations, the sun, the moon, and uh, it just look into your child's eyes and the fact that they're a living, uh, breathing human being is and how they came into the world. These, these everyday things, um, if you think about it, can really just inspire you to feel so much awe for God and everything that he allows uh, to come into being. So I think awe is, is an easy one um, just by looking at anything that, that, that exists. And to love God might seem like um, a more tricky one, um, but we know that the word ahava comes from the word have to give. So if we want to love, we're told that we should give. But we might say, you know, what can we give God? And God has everything. But here again, God makes it very easy. God says that all he wants is for us to live a good life um, by imitating his deeds. Um, and by that, if you want to know what God wants from us, you just look in the Torah. You see that uh, when Abraham was sick, God went to visit Abraham, so we should visit the sick. You uh, see that when um, Sarah was talking about Abraham, God didn't want his feelings to be hurt, so he was very sensitive in, in how he rephrased the conversation. We see that God wants for, you know, the people who are hungry, that we should help feed them and and all, all sorts of things that God took care of us in the desert and we should take care of people. And, and it says that God loves um, the the orphan and the widow and he takes care of them. And, and that in the words he uses for the convert even is um, that he gave him bread and he closed the convert. And why would he use, you know, clothing the convert and giving him bread? And I think that's such a beautiful thing because it's exactly the words that how God provided for us in the desert is that he He clothed us and that he fed us the man. So what God is trying to do is say, you know, there's no difference between you and the convert and you have to take care um, of the convert the same way um, I took care of you in the desert and, and there's no difference between the two of you. The two of you are the same. So if you want to love God, just, you know, you can just look in the in the Torah and see what God has done for us and emulate God's deeds. And, and by living a good life, that's all God wants from you. Just like, you know, we as parents, we want, what do we want from our children? It's not, we want, we want them to be good people, not because we want it for ourselves. It's because we want them to have a good life and that nothing makes us happier and shows us um, and, and, and engenders more love between us and our children as just seeing them wanting to live a good life. So same thing holds true for God. And if we want to be successful, all we have to do is live a good life. I mean, it's doing for God is really doing for ourselves in the end of the day. So I think that we have to um, take these messages to heart. And if we want to be successful, we have to always know who we are 
um, to strengthen ourselves as people, to look out for one another, and to live a good life. So Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy. Have a good one.